Traders, how are you with Marcello? Today we're gonna to be doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week, in economy and finance, the decisions that the governments are making right now that's gonna to lead to the energy crisis, it's gonna to lead to the food shortage, and we got a lot more happening this week. Elon Musk selling, why are all the rich people selling all their stocks? Why are they buying so much land? Let's get started. Two thousand twenty-one is officially over. So let me say, welcome to the new year. Don't forget to make those New Year's resolutions that you're going to literally stop in about a week from now. Don't forget to go to the gym, eat right, buy Bitcoin. That's what all the kids are saying these days, right? I'm just kidding. But I just want to say thank you. It's been an amazing year for for all of us at DTA, at Speed Up, on the new Axie team, all the projects I have here in Colombia. Most of you guys that are watching these videos have been part of kind of this almost 22 year history that I've had in the financial market. So I just want to say thank you and uh, let's have another amazing year. Overall, markets for the week, they were, everybody's kind of worried about the, the new Michael Jordan Elite 3.0 variant, the Omicron, but it, it seems to be very contagious, but not as deadly, which is what allowed a lot of the markets to be able to recuperate. One of the things that is happening this week is they're canceling thousands of flights, supposedly because of the, the variant, how people are getting sick, et cetera. But overall for the week, the markets were mostly higher. The Dow went up 1.07%. For the year, it went up 18.73. The S&P 500 went up 0.85% for the week. Seven, excuse me, 70th record close of the year this week. 26.89% for 2021. The NASDAQ was the only market that was negative in the US, negative 0.05%, but it was up 21.39% in 2021. The Buffett indicator, which is an indicator that generally values the stock market where it's either you know overvalued or undervalued or rightly valued, it is extremely overvalued right now. We are literally in the middle of a bubble. So the recession is probably gonna come most likely this year. It's hard to kind of predict, but no later probably than 2023. Overseas market news, the UK, fifth largest economy in the world, the FTSE saw gains of 15% for the year. The French SAC, or I don't know how you say it in French English, seventh largest economy in the world, nearly 30% positive for the year. And then the DAX, which Germany being the fourth largest economy in the world, went up 15.79%, its best Second best year since 2019. And overall for the for the week, Russia was the biggest winner in Europe. If you do consider Russia part of Europe, because obviously they have that huge swath in Asia. They went up 2.28%. Latin American and Canadian markets were mixed with Canada being down negative 0.12%. And Africa and the Middle East, South Africa was up bigger than others at 2.98%. They've uh, removed all the restrictions due to the Michael Jordan Elite 3.0 Omicron variant, which is great to see because then we don't have as much to worry about because if where it started, they're removing all the restrictions and that means that it's not as deadly, which is great for all of us, which means that we can kind of, we're not going back to normal, right? So just, just get that through your head. Unless you wanna to go to Florida or Texas or any other, um, what's the best way to say it? States that aren't run by the people running California, New York, Oregon, or Seattle. Uh, Florida's great, no restrictions, no mandates, anyway. Other than that, Africa and the Middle East, and Malaysia was up 3.36%, most positive there in Asia. And then in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news, Uruguay, the small country in South America between Argentina and Brazil, since most, a lot of people don't, are very good, are not very good in geography, South America, they're gonna start to regulate Bitcoin, not as money as El Salvador did, but as a financial investable asset, which is actually great. Basically, they probably just want taxes. Mexico prepares to launch its own CBDC, which is a government coin. That's what I call them, a government Bitcoin in 2024. And if you and I remember talking about this, let me look into my eyes. Look, look into my eyes. I always thought that the future of, of blockchain and Bitcoin was going to be government coin. Government coin allows them to control everything. It allows them to track your every move. In uh, China, they actually made 
the digital wand, the digital currency they have already in place expire. So you had to go out and spend your money, which basically now the governments around the world, that's essentially what they're doing, right? That's why we're seeing so much inflation this year, because governments are pumping the United States, for example, put in 40% more dollars into the system than before the pandemic. And that's why we're seeing inflation rates. That's why you're seeing when you go to the store, you're spending 20, 30% more at the grocery store, right? They only tell you that the inflation rate is 6% and change. But you and I, you and I know what's up. Other than that, Binance, the largest crypto exchange in the world, is allowing itself to get regulated and become a regulated exchange around the world. And Vitalik Buterin, which is the creator of Ethereum, says that Argentina is a state that is. Uh, how do you say poco cup? I'm gonna. I always do the videos in Spanish first because of all the information that I talk about in Latin America, and it's funny because I always. I always have to think, I, I, I finish doing the videos in Spanish and then I think in Spanish and then I have to go and do the videos and I always get, I always, I always get confused. But he said, Argentina has not, it has a very not capable, I know I'm not saying this grammatically correct, but you're going to understand me. Argentina has a not very capable state, but very capable people. And we're kind of going through that movement. I see a lot of what's happening right now in the United States, what happening in Argentina. They were the richest country in the world in the 1900s. That's why they call it the Paris of the South. A lot of Europeans came down, beautiful architecture, beautiful people, beautiful country. And they started voting for socialists, starting with Perón. They've been voting for them in 70 years, and now they're a third world country. And that's kind of what's happening in the U.S. as well. Bitcoin lower this week, 8.24% and got to just over 47,500, but it's up over 65% in 2021. And in commodities, food technically is a commodity, right? But I, I was going to talk about this at the end, but I thought it would actually be better to talk about this in the beginning because we talked about the food shortages and things like that. Kraft Heinz, which is the fifth largest food and beverage company in the world, the third largest food and beverage company in the United States, said that starting in 2022, they are going to see up price increases of up to 20%, anywhere between 5 to 20% from the prices that we have now. Meaning that the prices that have already gone up 5 and 8%, 10% are going to go on top of that even higher. The Great Plain Aquifers, it's the middle of the country in the United States where they produce a lot of food, are actually drying up. And if they ever do dry up or they start to put limits on the amount of water that you can use, it's a huge problem for our food production, being that the United States is not only a major produ producer of food in the, for the United States, obviously, but for the world. But up to 20% of the world's grains are grown in that area more than 40% of the United States beef production, in addition to about 40% of the vegetables, nuts, and fruits consumed in the United States. And, and you'll see a map there. Not bueno. So I'm, I'm, I'm explaining that to you because I've talked to you guys before about the food shortages that are most likely going to come. And you guys can see that with the inflation and then the natural disasters. It's literally a double whammy and the supply chain issues. I, but the preppers were probably right. Yeah, probably not a bad idea to have 30, 60 days worth of food at your house, just in case. Marcello's a little bit crazy, but you know, you never know. You can always, you can eat the can of tuna five years from now or the canned roast beef or, you know, the spam or whatever you guys want to, or the noodles, right? The plastic noodles that they make out of, out of China. Other than that, the Flexport is a company that leases jets, has leased three 747 Boeing jets to McDonald's to be able to go ahead and solve their French fry crisis. They're going to literally ship, I should say, send via these 747s, three of them, potatoes so they can solve their food shortage in Japan. What, what food crisis? There's no, nothing's going on. Everything's fine. E the EU is drawing up plans as well for some natural gas and nuclear energy projects to be considered green investments after they've been fighting for a year-long battle in the governments. If you guys don't know, the European Union, in, or, in order for them to pass a law, everybody has to agree. If one person says no, then it doesn't pass. So there's a lot of countries, for example, France uses mostly nuclear energy. So if that's not considered green, then obviously they're not going to have literally 90% of their energy production. So there's a lot of infighting between what is and what isn't. And, and they're going to finally solve that by saying that some of these nat gas and also nuclear 
energy production and projects are actually considered green energy for the tax that they want to go ahead and apply. Indonesia, which is the largest exporter of thermal coal in the world, has decided to stop exporting coal due to the fear that it wants to make sure that it has enough coal for their domestic power plants. They have low supplies right now. So remember, I talked to you guys uh, about this before, where for about roughly 40% of the energy production in the world is coal. The largest producer, the largest exporter of coal in the world, thermal coal, is not exporting anymore. The United States coal production, if you guys remember about three weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, already has their production of 2022 and 2023 mostly sold. There's only about 10% missing, and that was a few weeks ago, so it's probably sold completely right now. So people are literally trying to make sure that they get their supplies, because if they don't get their supplies, they're not going to be able to have their power plants. Colombia, which if I'm not mistaken, is the fifth or sixth largest exporter of coal in the world, was having problems mining the coal due to the fact that they're having strong rains. 40% of the world's electricity has a problem. If you guys remember last week also, Europe is already having blackouts. The countries of Kosovo and Serbia due to the 10% of the nuclear energy in France being knocked out. So maybe stock up a little bit. It'll be fine. U.S. crude went up 1.92% to 75.21 it went up 55.82 percent the international which is brent went up 2.15 percent that went up for the year 50.70 percent for the week it ended up at 77.78 and precious metals gold had its worst year since 2015 and went down five percent for the week it is up 1.13 percent at 1830 well, silver went up 1.91% to $23.40. Spain finishes the year with its highest inflation in government reported inflation for three decades at 6.7%. You and I know that's probably at 10 or 15 if they actually did the inflation properly. Big U.S. investor banks posted $10 billion in record IPO revenues in 2021 as average investors in the year faced their worst returns in years. So obviously the decisions that the government and the financial people are making, the central bank in the United States are making decisions that's best for the rich people, not for you and I, right? And also Istanbul, which is the biggest city in Turkey, not the capital of Turkey, which is Ankara, has its biggest inflation and worst inflation in a decade. Erdogan, which is the president there in Turkey, is obviously making the worst decisions possible. Other than that, we have the finance ministry in China saying that they're going to extend the preferential income tax policies for foreigners and they're going to extend it to December 31st, 2023. It includes things like education and other things, and that was set to expire on January 1st of this year. So by the time you guys are watching this video, for example, in political news, Eric Adams, which is the New York City mayor, the second black mayor in its history, it's facing a lot of difficult decisions as the U.S. largest city is facing unprecedented, let's call them challenges. Double the rate of the unemployment at 9.4% and significant rise in murder shootings and other categories of violent crimes, but they just keep voting the same way. So we won't get into politics, but there's a big difference right now in, in states like Texas and Florida compared to places like New York City and even California, choose wisely. Economic News Labor Department said on Thursday that new claims for the U.S. unemployment benefits fell in the week leading up to Christmas. They revised the number down by 8,000 to about 198,000, and it's the worst, excuse me, it's the best numbers since 1969. Now remember, this kind of, they, they like to point out these numbers saying that, the, oh look, it's the best in unemployment uh, benefits numbers since 1969, but in actuality, the reason why they are so low is because people are getting paid from the stimulus in the government and not going out and looking for a job. So now all the people that were looking for a job are not looking for a job anymore. And obviously the people who are unemployed in the United States, they don't count them as unemployed. They're just not, they fall off, right? So record number of job openings, however, that tells you that a lot of companies now and the wages are, why, wages are rising at a record rate, even though they're not as high as inflation, due to the fact that nobody wants to work because they're getting free money from the government. In corporate news, Ford 
Closed on Tuesday with a market cap higher than GM for the first time in 2016. Their price has doubled this year and is trading at 20-year highs, mainly due to the investments that they're making into battery electric vehicles. The best-selling vehicle in the United States, which is the Ford F-150 for the last 40 years, is going electric. And in addition to that, Ford invested in, let's call it the Tesla pickup company called Rivian. They have a 12% stake in the company and their IPO that they had this year makes that valued at about $12 billion. Excuse me, Rivian is worth $12 billion and they have 12% of that stake. Other than that, the US has now blocked Ethiopia, Mali, and Guinea due to their violations of their, what they're calling human rights abuses. They blocked them from the duty-free trade program as the Biden administration is moving forward on his promise to do that. And in other news, for corporate news, we have South Korea's export expanding at a record rate this year. It was double digits, over 20%. It's the fastest rate of increase in 11 years. South Korea, if you didn't know, not one of the largest economies in the world, but the eighth largest exporter in the world, so extremely important for them. This obviously has to do with the situation where a lot of demand for technology, a lot of demand, especially for the Christmas season, and obviously the, the recovery after the, the pandemic. In technology, according to Human Rights Watch, Russian authorities redoubled their efforts in 2021 to repress online freedoms and blocking tools for censorship. If you guys don't remember, the United States government is also doing the same thing, censoring people, but in the United States, we don't call it a bad thing. We do it, a, we call it a good thing because we wanna make sure there isn't misinformation in the United States, huh? Sweden's, and just for the record, I don't ever want to get political when I do these videos, but normally the party that does the censoring is not the one that's on the right side of history. Sweden's North Volt said on Wednesday that the Gigafactory in North Sweden has assembled its first battery. It's the first battery uh, factory plant in all of Europe, which is in Sweden. They use a type of prismatic cell format, which is a lot thinner and lighter. And U.S. Transportory, Transportory, U.S. Transportation Secretary, or in other words, Transportory, uh, Buttigieg is saying that they're going to hold off the launch of their new 5G wireless service. They told AT&T and Verizon because their concerns about the aviation safety. If you guys remember a few weeks ago, we talked about how these companies sent a letter to the Federal Aviation Administration letting them know that they were worried about the safety concerns, not from our bodies, you know, just from the airplanes, because obviously it's completely safe for us. Families get their first 3D printed home in the United States. It only took 12 hours compared to the normal rate of four weeks for a standard typical home. Habitat for Humanity donated the home to a family, which is great because obviously with this technology, we can build homes faster and a lot cheaper. And according to financial filings published late Tuesday, Elon Musk sold another $1.02 billion in stock he also took options on 1.6 million Tesla shares at $6.24 a share. If you guys don't know, he doesn't get a salary for what he does, even though he's the owner of Tesla and SpaceX, but they do have a compensation package which is tied to stock mainly, right? And so he, he has an option to buy the stock, let's put it down here, at $6.24, where right now it's at what, $800, $900? So he's the richest man in the world with only Tesla stock worth at about $275 billion, even though he does own SpaceX as well. Musk, uh, I already part of that. They're, they're also doing a recall on Thursday for about 475,000 cars in the US, equivalent to the amount of deliveries that they had all of last year in 2021. Due to that, they may be an increase of accidents. All Model 3 from 2017 to 2020 and over 119,000 Model S cars from 2014. Defective cars. Love Teslas, love the design, but 
they got a little, they got a quality issue. That's why I haven't bought any Teslas yet. Biden administration is also committing to extending the ISS operations to 2030, said administrator for NASA Bill Nelson on Friday. They're committing to working with partners like Russia, for example, and Congress approved previously the funding since 2024. In international events, the WHO, the World Health Organization, is saying warning, not saying warning on Wednesday that new COVID variants could well emerge during a pandemic, fully resistance to the current vaccines or past infections. So don't forget, you're gonna you're gonna get a monthly dose of that awesome uh, vaccine, which is right, right, again not to be political, but again the Omicron variant, the Michael Jordan variant 3.0 elite version of the of the pandemic, not as deadly, which is great. But they're saying that we're most likely gonna get. The, the, the more strong ones in the future. Putin said on Sunday he's going to consider a slew of options in the West to meet security guarantees, precluding NATO's expansion into Ukraine. Many of you guys don't know, for example, that there was an agreement between the United States and also Russia that they weren't going to expand into these previous Soviet nations like Ukraine that border Russia because of security issues, right? So now they're actually doing it. So Russia is very adamant in trying to stop that because obviously they don't want the military from NATO and the U.S. right next to their borders. And they're saying that they're going there. They sent some draft security docs demanding that Ukraine is denied membership into NATO. And Taiwan President Tsai Hing Wen sent the New Year's message in China stating that military conflict isn't the answer. But Chinese government responded with a very stern warning that if Taiwan crossed any red lines, they're going to lead to a profound catastrophe. And in unusual facts this year, actress Betty White has the longest acting career in history at over 90, was it 90s? 1939 is when she started. So 49, 59, 69, 79, 89, 99, 60 years. She acted well into her 90s and had eight time Emmy winner as well. She has passed away, unfortunately. And new archaeological evidence in the discovery of a remote site in Turkey shows that Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten and Queen Nefertiti may have had connection to the supposed lost continent of Atlantis. Ancient artifacts have been dated to 10,000 before Christ and also supposedly have a connection to Atlantis. And in natural disasters this week, thousands of people are without power in California, Washington and California. We're talking about, if I do the math real quick in my head, over 40,000 people due to 30 inches of snow that hit the Pacific Northwest. And we're supposedly supposed to get a huge snowstorm now as well. Stay safe out there, get some food. We're gonna have some energy crisis this year due to the supply chain and also a lot of other things. Hope you're doing great. Hope you had an amazing year. Let's have an amazing 2022. We'll see you next week.